so we're we're remodeling our bathroom and when the demo team came in they pulled the vanity away from the wall and this snapshot fell out and they handed it to me and I looked at it and I thought well my daughter Lucy's about four my son Dan he's about a year and a half and I realized that this was from the year that I fired Santa Claus <laughs> So about 20 Christmases ago, I was almost a year in to a stint as a marketing director at Jackson Crossing Mall out in Jackson. And the mall had a long-standing informal contract with a real beard Santa, which at the time was a big deal. And when you book your real beard Santa, you got to do it early. So I called him in August. And I talked to him and I said, you know, how are we going to work this? And we basically agreed that just as in years past, he would work from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. from Black Friday weekend through Christmas Eve for $2,500 in cash. Now, I will continue to call him Santa because he never did tell me his real name. <laughs> He insisted on being addressed as Santa Claus. So, so we hammer all this out, and then as the season approached, I gave him another call to go over the details of his arrival parade. So, yeah, this was not a big deal. We contacted a couple local charities. They put together some small floats. We had the high school marching band come in. We marched around the perimeter of the parking lot, ending at center court, where Santa was installed in his throne on the Christmas display. So on the day of the parade, I go to greet Santa, and I realize he is dealing with a hell of a cold. This guy is miserable. But everything with the parade went off without a hitch, no problem. He's on his throne. We're good to go. So. About a week into his tenure, I'm walking past the display, and I notice that Santa is swigging NyQuil from the bottle up there on his phone. And there's a little boy and his mother in front of me, and I hear the little boy turn to his mother and say, Mommy, be quiet. Santa's sleeping. <laughs> So I look over, and sure enough, that NyQuil is doing its job. So I go, and I get a cup of coffee, and I hand it to Santa, and I tell him, hey, listen, you need to be a little bit more alert up here. Try waving to the kids as they walk by or something. Well, I started hearing people say, maybe Santa's lost his stuff this year. <laughs> So there was a little girl that climbed up into his lap and very sweetly asked, how's Mrs. Claus doing? Well, he told her, I don't know. We got divorced six years ago. So, then I am approached by the mall's security director. And he proceeds to tell me that when his children visited with Santa, he told them, well, if you don't have a fireplace with a chimney, make sure you leave your front door unlocked so I can come in and bring your Christmas gifts on Christmas Eve. So then about a week before Christmas, we get a call from the service center. And they said they had received a complaint about Santa. So it turns out that a, a little boy had asked Santa for a rifle for Christmas. And he told the boy that Santa does not bring guns, knives, or live animals for Christmas. Well, considering that Santa's salary was being paid by the Merchants Association Marketing Fund that all of the merchants in the mall contributed to, and we had a Dunham Sporting Goods and a mom and pop pet store that probably weren't going to be too thrilled with his position. 
So I told him, listen, the next time you get a request for one of your taboo items, <laughs> tell them maybe ask mom and dad for those gifts. Well, he kind of stood his ground, didn't really want to do that. So I went back to my boss, the mall manager, and I kind of went through what we've been dealing with and we talked about it. He says, you know what, we've got another real beard Santa we could bring in as a substitute. So let's bring him in the last few days. We'll pay the original Santa his entire fee and send him on his merry way. <laughs> So I get the money and I get the 2500 in cash, put it in an envelope, and I walk up there and I tell him, hey, listen, I know that you've just been feeling miserable. We're going to let you go a few days early. You go rest up so you can enjoy Christmas with your family. Here's your, your whole kit and caboodle. And off he goes. Well, the next day in the Jackson Citizen Patriot newspaper, <laughs> There's an article detailing how Santa had been fired from Jackson Crossing for telling a child he would not bring them guns, knives, or anything. Now, at the time, I don't know if it still is or if it even exists anymore, but at the time, the Jackson Citizen Patriot was an afternoon paper. So we didn't really hear too much about it the day that story came out. So as I'm driving home from Jackson to Livonia, I'm thinking to myself, wow, he did the exact opposite of what the marketing director of a mall should do. <laughs> you don't screw up Christmas at the mall. <laughs> but I got home and my husband Mark's making dinner and the kids are running around, having it playing around, and I flip on the news. Oh, no. <laughs> And on Channel 4, on the Detroit News, is a story about Santa getting fired in Jackson. Woo! So I dove for the remote to turn off the TV because I don't want my kids thinking Mommy fired Santa Claus. the phone and I call my boss and I said, hey, this story has made it to the Detroit market. Do you think maybe we should try and put together a statement in case we get any other media interest? And he, ah, poo poo's my suggestion. Nah, we'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> so the next day I go into work and we start getting phone calls from radio stations in New York. <laughs> California, Minnesota, Florida. The Associated Press had picked up the story and put it out on their wire. Well, I kept my head kind of low when the Jackson Citizen Patriot then ran a two-page spread of letters to the editor in their Sunday edition vilifying them all for firing Santa Claus for his policies. And there was really nothing I could do. I just kind of dodged phone calls, no commented until I was blue in the face, just kind of waiting for all this to blow over. And it took me about four months to find another job. Because I was bound to determine there was no way I was going to spend another Christmas at Jackson Crossing Mall. My kids didn't hear the story until they were in high school. And so I was able to maintain their belief in Santa and their mother for a few more years. But that, ladies and gentlemen, was my year without a Santa Claus.